So in this video, we're gonna talk about property inspections. If you're an investor landlord, it's crucial that you know uh, how to conduct them and why they're important. Even if you're not conducting them yourself, maybe you've got an agent or you get an inventory clerk or an inspection clerk to help you with these, you need to make sure that they're covering various bases. Uh, if you get it wrong, then you can miss important maintenance that might cost you thousands. There's even uh, an up to £10,000 fine for not ticking one little box on your inspection. It's really key that you know what that one is. So, let's get into it. So first, let's talk about mid-tenancy inspections. That's the regular inspection you do, and personally, I think six months is about right. So you wanna strike the right balance between um, doing the inspections regularly enough uh, that you capture all the issues that you might capture, that you need to capture, uh, and not being too frequent that you're basically bugging your tenant. Now, we say six months, but the way we organize it is that we set the first inspection three months after moving and then every six months thereafter. So keeping that cadence means that you get a reasonably quick inspection after the tenants have first moved in. It's long enough to assess how that tenant's living. You know, if you go there uh, after a week, then they've only just moved in, they're still unpacking their boxes. But after three months, you get a really good idea of how the tenant's living. If there's something that's not ideal, you get to knock it back into shape. And thereafter, if you set it every six months, then you get the right cadence. Now, if on that first visit you find that something's completely off, you've also got the option of then saying, I will see you next week or next month or in three months. So you can manage it that way. It's essential that you document every inspection photographically. Uh, you can get apps for this. As a letting agency, we use a particular app. It's actually linked to our inventory software and that'd be really handy for you if it was because it allows you to easily compare with a click of a button the property condition on move-in compared to how it is now, whether that's you know, six months later, six years later, and on move-out. So having that bookended process all photographic is really important. So for any inspection, start by booking the appointment with your tenant in plenty of time. Give them good notice. It's absolutely fine if they tidy up for your inspection. It's probably best if they do, and they make things as neat and tidy. It shows willing if when you turn up, you can smell um, furniture polish and they vacuum the floor. When you uh, organize the, the time and the date, turn up on time, and a property inspection doesn't take very long. 15 to 20 minutes is usually fine if you've not got anything else to, uh, any problems there. If everything's fine, 15 to 20 minutes should do it. If you're using an app, that will make things a lot easier. Ours is carried around on an iPhone, it all syncs back to the office, um, but it will actually run through all the things to check. Um, start outside, you're looking at gutters, roof, leaks, um, signs of uh, water going down brickwork or down render, overflowing gutters, plants in the chimney, those kind of things, and report each one of those as maintenance to deal with later. That's what our system will do, and you as a landlord can make a separate side note, these are maintenance issues. And then when you go inside, you're looking for condition of the property, wear and tear, and you need to separate out between landlord wear and tear, fair wear and tear, that's things that you as a landlord is responsible for, and tenant dilapidations, things that they've caused. Interesting, if you spot something there and then, it is okay to say to the tenant, there's a problem, I need you to please fix that, and we're gonna come back in a week, two weeks, or a month, depending on what it is, and check that you have done that. You need to fix that at your own expense, you need to paint that wall, you need to chop that bush, you need to cut the garden, whatever it is. So know what is yours to deal with as a landlord, what is theirs to deal with as a tenant, and do pick them up on it on the inspection. Now here's something that not all landlords know, and it can cost you dearly, up to 10,000 pounds. Uh, it's a, uh, a fine from um, a border force, actually, from uh, the, uh, the immigration people. And recently, it's in 2024, it went from a £5,000 fine to a £10,000 fine per issue. And you could have three, four, five, ten of these issues in one property. What am I talking about? I'm talking about right to rent. 
uh, it is your responsibility as a landlord to ensure you are not harboring illegal immigrants. You are now border force. Um, practically speaking, how do you do that? Uh, now, honestly, you can be fooled and kidded, and that is not your responsibility, but you do need to take reasonable steps and have documented that you've taken reasonable steps. Uh, so the little button that we press on our inventory software says we've taken these reasonable steps and there's some checks. Some things that you will be looking out for is, let's say you've got a, um, a couple and a small child on the AST, uh, on, the, on the agreement, but when you get there, there's 10 pairs of walking boots or working boots in the hallway, or maybe there's six toothbrushes, or you notice there's a double bed in the lounge and the dining room. They are clear signs that more people are living in the property than are on the AST, and you don't know who those people are. The next step is to be a whistleblower and report it direct to Border Force. You must do that the day you notice it. If you don't, every single one of those people that are found to be illegal immigrants and not have a right to remain in the UK is a £10,000 fine to you. Don't get caught out. So let's talk about the final inspection. So you've moved the tenant in, you've had periodic inspections throughout the life of the tenancy. Now you need to do an end of tenancy inspection. It's a little bit different. Uh, a tenant gives notice and you know that they're going to leave. Uh, ideally, they're going to give you a month's worth of notice. So what you need to do now is make sure that the property is inspected before they move out to give them a chance to clean, tidy, remedy anything, decorate a wall, fix something that was their damage. It also means at this point you get to see is the property ready to market or are you maybe going to have to change a bathroom, change a kitchen and you can pre-plan those things. So by organising a pre-move out inspection it gets your tenant uh, ready to get everything sorted but it also keeps and helps keep the void short because you can organise that new kitchen or the redecoration well ahead of time, not the day the tenant hands the keys back to you. The final thing that's worth mentioning is council inspections. They're becoming more and more prevalent. So a council will send you a letter, very routine, or maybe it's not, maybe they've actually been flagged that there's something they want to inspect. If you're in a licensing area and you've got a license, these are becoming more common. But a council can come into a property and inspect pretty much any time they like, as long as they give the right kind of notice. You need to, as a landlord, keep up to date on all the rules and regulations that apply to you as being a landlord and renting out property house health and safety rating system, for example, the fire regulations, right to rent, right to remain checks, and make sure that you're on top of all of these things. It's highly recommended that if the council go around and do one of these inspections, you attend and make notes. It's not always the case that the council are right, and often they, often probably a little bit unfair, but occasionally they can make suggestions or comments that just aren't true or applicable. And if you're there, you can nip them in the bud, uh, pre present counter evidence, and make sure things stay on track. So if you can, definitely be at those council inspections. So in conclusion, conducting inspections is essential. It helps protect your asset. You're gonna spot that leaking gutter that if you didn't spot it, it would damage the internal plaster. You can get it fixed for three pounds fifties worth of new clip versus 300 pounds worth of decorating inside. It's gonna make sure that your tenant looks after the property. I really do believe that if you're looking after your tenant and you keep um, doing these inspections regularly, even if it still seems like a little bit of a, uh, a hassle, um, it's going to make your tenant understand that the condition of the property is important to you and I believe they'll look after the property better. And don't forget those £10,000 fines uh, for every illegal immigrant, it's a huge thing, don't get caught out. Um, so keeping those records are essential, uh, absolutely essential. Often uh, in any kind of uh, litigation or uh, possession process, uh, the other side will be asking, how often did you inspect? And they will want to see your records. So make sure you have got them. As a letting agent, we're meticulous about keeping those records. Hopefully that's been useful for you. You now understand how and why the, um, uh, the process is important. 
If you want more information, head over to forthelandlords.com, uh, going to the learning hub, that's always a good, good start. Becoming a member, consider becoming a member because there's all sorts of downloads and guides applicable to this and other things that you can get, get hold of. Uh, wherever you're watching this, like, subscribe, and keep more of this kind of content coming. Bye for now.